All right, guys. Well, we already did a Windows 11 video for 2022, so let's go ahead and talk about 10. Good news here is it's basically the same process. We're just using Windows 10 instead. So I'm going to kind of probably go a little quicker than normal through this, but if you want to see a more in-depth video on this, check out my Windows 11 tutorial, or you can check out some of my older uh, popular Windows 10 tutorials as well. But Let's go ahead and give you the rundown. So first things first, if you haven't already, you need to download VirtualBox. So as I'm recording this video, the current version is 6.1, uh, what is it? 6.1.32. So you just go to virtualbox.org, you go to the download section, and since we're on a Mac, we'll click on that OS 10 host right there. And once you click on that, it'll start to download it for you. You open the DMG file and you simply install it like you would any other program on your Mac. Now here is the only thing you might run into. It might tell you that you need to update a extension or something like that in system preferences. That's totally fine. Uh, all you have to do is head over to uh, your system preferences. You'll go to security and privacy and on the general tab at the bottom you should see something that says allow or something like that. You just click that and you'll actually have to restart your computer after you install VirtualBox. So if you run into that, that is basically how you fix that issue. Next thing we're gonna need is a copy of Windows 10. So if you just simply Google Windows 10 download, you should see a Microsoft link. Please make sure it's a Microsoft link. I'll put this in the description to make it easier, but if you do decide to go Google route yourself, just make sure you're clicking on the right one. So it should say, download Windows 10 disk image ISO file from Microsoft's website. So we'll just click on that. And when you click on that one, it's gonna come up here and it's going to bring you to a page that looks a little something like this. So uh, basically you just scroll down and the last time Windows 10 was updated was in November of 2021. So that's the current edition here. So you just select it right there, the Windows 10 multi-edition ISO. And then we'll choose a product language. So just choose whichever uh, language you want there. Hit confirm again. And then it's gonna give you two download links right here. So 64-bit or 32-bit. Of course we want the 64-bit, but if you need a 32-bit, it is right there for you as well. So you just click on that and it'll start to download that file. Now the ISO is about a five gig file, if I remember correctly. So depending on your internet connection speeds, you could be waiting a while or you could be waiting a few moments. But yeah, once you get those two things downloaded, you are good to go. All right, let's go ahead and hop into VirtualBox. So when you open VirtualBox up for the first time, it's not gonna look like this. I already use the program. I already have virtual machines installed. So you're actually gonna see nothing here. Uh, this is gonna be blank and you'll see like a little welcome message in this area. So uh, basically what you wanna do is click on this new button here. And this is where we can start the process of creating our virtual machine. So under the name here, we want to name it something pretty recognizable. I typically just name them whatever the operating system is because it's nice and simple, but you can name this whatever you want to. Keep in mind, it's what's going to appear over here on the left hand side. So if you have a ton of virtual machines, you know, maybe you might have different ones for different things, but they're all the same operating system. So you just name it whatever you would like there. The machine folder is where they are all stored. By default, they are in the home folder uh, with a VirtualBox VMs folder in there. That's a really good place to put it, but you can put these anywhere you want to. Um, I actually have videos showing how you can install a virtual machine on an external hard drive if you need to. So if you don't want that in your home folder, you can choose wherever you want it to be. And then you can see that based on our name, it's already recognized that we're doing Windows and it has a Windows 10 64-bit. 
So just keep that in mind. If you did download 32-bit for some reason, you'll have to change it uh, right here because it automatically defaults to 64. But since we are doing 64, we don't need to change that. So we can hit continue. Now right here is the RAM. So your virtual machine is going to virtualize some of your host machine's RAM for you. So Windows 10 only requires two gigs, which is about 20, 48 megabytes. So that's what it recommends uh, for us. You can make this any you want here, as long as it's in this green area. Once you start going over the green area is when things start getting a little rough. <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend doing it. Most of the time though, you just wanna know whatever your host machine has and you don't wanna go over half of that so this computer right here is 16 gigs so i wouldn't go over eight but honestly you really don't need more than four between two and four is really all you need unless you're doing windows 11 which actually does require four gigs of ram now so on windows 10 though you should be just fine with just two so you can set that to whatever you like so the good news is about this ram too is you can go back in the settings later and actually change this so if you find that well hey we're running a little slow here we need some more ram you can bump that up so uh, definitely helpful there but we're just going to leave it at two for now we want to go ahead and create a virtual hard disk now we want to use a virtual box disk image and we want to nine times out of ten choose dynamically allocated so if you don't know what that means uh, basically dynamically allocated is going to allocate storage space over time as you need it and it's going to allocate that all the way up to the maximum size that you set so for example here in a second it's going to ask us what we want our hard drive size to be so if we want it to be 50 gigabytes basically if we don't use 50 gigabytes it's only going to use what it needs all the way up to 50 if we choose a fixed size, then it will immediately take 50 gigs from our host machine storage. So really, as a storage optimizer here, just do dynamically allocated. Some people say that fixed size runs faster, which I could definitely see that being possible. But really, dynamically allocated is going to be good for you. And then here is where we choose the size for the virtual machine. Now it says 50 gigabytes, but I'm pretty sure Windows 10 requires a minimum of 64. So I would definitely do at least 64, uh, but you can set this up to, you know, whatever you like, all the way up to obviously whatever your uh, host machine has. So most people though don't need much storage on a virtual machine because they're not doing too terribly many things that need a lot of storage. Really, my max size on one of my virtual machines is 128 gigabytes. So you just pick whatever you need. You know what you're going to be doing on this virtual machine. But here is the thing about choosing your disk size here. You cannot change this. So once you set this, it's set. The only way to change it would be to delete the virtual machine and recreate another one. But once you get that all set there, you hit create and it's going to populated here in your VirtualBox manager. Before we start this up, let's go into the settings. And we're just gonna kinda of check a few things and talk about a few things here. So Windows 10 isn't as strict as Windows 11. If you guys have watched my Windows 11 tutorial, you know that they have a lot of strict requirements now uh, to get it working properly. So really, you don't have to worry about anything on here. Under System, this is where you can change that RAM whenever you would like. We don't need a floppy disk anymore, so you can just get rid of that. Uh, your processor, you can, if you would like to make things a little quicker, you can bump it up right here to two CPUs, uh, but obviously one or two is really all that you need. Um, other things here, your video memory, you wanna make sure that that's all the way to the right hand side. And if you enable 3D acceleration, you can give it a little bit more video memory uh, as you can see there but yeah that's another way to make things a little bit quicker but most of the time I find that it's not really necessary to change that uh, and then the rest of this stuff really is totally fine you know, there's nothing to change 
Uh, your shared folders, this is where you could add a folder from your host machine. So if you had something new on your desktop or documents, you could put that folder right here and it would basically make kind of like a quote unquote network location in the virtual machine. Uh, so you could access some of your host machine's files much easier. But yeah, once you get that stuff set how you like it, you just hit OK. And then we go ahead and click on the start button right there. Now when it pops up here, it's going to ask us to select a virtual disk file. So this is just basically the ISO file. So you want to click on the folder right here. You want to click on this add button. And you're going to navigate on over to wherever you stored your ISO file that you just downloaded. Chances are yours are probably still in your downloads. I have a whole uh, set of different ISOs for different operating systems and all that. So I just have them organized by, you know, folders and things like that. So, uh, but yeah, so whenever you locate that, you just simply hit open and it's going to mount it right there. You hit choose and then now we can click start and I'm sure this is going to throw it to my other display because it always does that yeah there it goes drag it back down here but yeah so this should start up the setup process for Windows 10 alright so there is the loading the boot screen here for Windows 10 let's give it a second to load all right so we want to make sure that our languages are correct and so is our keyboard we can hit the next button and we can hit install now and it's going to ask you if you have a product key for windows now if you are a person that has that we'll go ahead and put it in there but i'm sure most of us don't so uh, the good news is with windows 10 and even windows 11 still you don't have to have a product key. You can literally click, I don't have a product key, and you can choose whatever version of Windows that you would like. And you can use it as long as you want to without a product key. So I think that's pretty cool. The only thing you can't do is personalize your PC. So you can't change your wallpaper, or colors, or things like that. But who cares? It's you know, not having to buy a copy of Windows. So, uh, yeah, you can choose whichever one you want here. I usually like to choose the N versions, like a Windows 10 Pro, because Windows 10 Home has a lot of, you know, random stuff that you don't need and annoying stuff and all that. Uh, so, yeah, like a nice Windows 10 Pro N is everything you need and nothing you don't. So, you choose whichever one you want here and you go ahead and click on that next button it's going to ask you to accept the license terms of course we will as usual and then you just hit next again and instead of choosing upgrade we want to click custom install and we want to make sure that we select the virtual drive that we created so there's that 64 gigs that i selected earlier Yours might say a different size, whatever size you obviously, uh, you know, put there. Uh, well, yeah, once you click on that, you just hit the next button and it should go ahead and start installing Windows for you. So, yeah, there we go. So, basically what this is going to do, get it all installed and it's going to bring us into a setup screen. So, go ahead and give this a second here. Okay, so this right here is just your typical Windows 10 setup. You just go through it, answer all the questions. So I'm going to skip over this stuff right here. Uh, but yeah, just answer all the questions, set up Windows how you would like. And we should arrive on the desktop once we get through this process. So go ahead and get through this and we'll see what it says. Stop. So there's one more thing we need to do before we can start using this and that is install the VirtualBox guest editions. So this is going to fix things like all your virtual drivers and stuff like that because actually getting those virtual drivers makes a difference. One way it's going to make a difference is screen resolution. So if I resize the window or even if I go into full screen, 
it does not automatically adjust to my entire screen. Another thing you notice that the cursor is very laggy so actually the drivers will help smooth out your experience as well. So, so in order to install these virtual drivers we need the guest edition. So here in the menu bar if you go to devices you can click right here it says insert guest editions CD image and in order to go find that we just head over into our file explorer right here and we go over to this PC and you should see the guest editions mounted in here and there they are in the CD drive so you can just double click and you should see one that says VBox Windows Editions just go ahead and double click on that and it will open up the installation wizard so it's going to ask you if you want to allow it you just hit yes of course and it's going to go ahead and open that up for us it always hides it behind the window for some reason but let's go ahead and hit next next install and you're probably going to notice your screen flash and maybe a noise or two I can get a little pop up says something like this you just want to go ahead and hit install it's totally fine and last thing is we can go ahead and reboot now you already notice look how much smoother the cursor is so yeah it definitely makes a difference they're definitely necessary but let's go ahead and hit finish on that and when we restart everything should be good to go for us all right guys so now that we're back here on the desktop you can see and if I resize the window, it automatically adjusts to whatever the window size is. And the same goes for if you go into full screen mode, it will now take up the entire display for you. So, yeah, guest editions are definitely a must install. So, but yeah, guys that's all I got for you today I hope this video helps you out if you have any problems with this leave a comment down below I'll try to get back to you but I have many many tutorials about this I have many videos about certain errors and things you might encounter so if any of that does happen be sure to check out those videos or like I said leave me a comment down below but yeah guys that's all I got for you today thanks for watching as always and I'll catch you on the next one